We are at Experimental Gallery today in Calcutta uh, with the documentary photographer artist Shomo Shankar Bose and uh, today is the very last day of, in fact the last day has passed. Today is the last day the exhibition is around installed in this space. Uh, the exhibition where the birds uh, never sing. Uh, this is an ongoing work uh, by the artist on the 1979 Moenjapi massacre. Um, uh, 1979 Morinjapi massacre, which is the forcible uh, eviction of hundreds of Bengali Dalit refugees uh, who lived on the reserve forest land of uh, a reserve uh, forest land or, uh, on Morinjapi Island in the Shundurbans and the subsequent death, starvation, and disease that followed after this event. Um, Shomo has been uh, working on this project for the last uh, four years, three to four years, uh, since 2017. And we will uh, primarily go through, uh, take a walk through of this exhibition and show you the space. Uh, the thing to keep in mind is that the work already exists as a photo book uh, that had come out last, last year. But this is the first time it has been uh, installed uh, in a physical space like this and we want to start with the one room that is um, crucial to this exhibition and is unique to this exhibition because this is uh, not available in any other form as part of this work in any other space and this is in this room we sort of start getting an insight into Shomo's research methodologies, his engagement with archives uh, his engagement with documenting oral histories and sort of like the that the backbone of the work and because he takes from there he starts from this like space of historical uh, documentation uh, oral histories of communities but then he takes it into a different space of reenactment of um, memories folklores and uh, enters a space of performativity eventually but to begin with, I think we'll let Shomo talk about the first room of the exhibition. I'm, I'm going to go in there with them. And yeah, this first room of the exhibition has a video work that, that is more recent uh, to, to this whole uh, process. All these, uh, all these people have been photographed by Shomo for this uh, work, for this work, but this is also kind of a more direct engagement with their uh, sort of personal and political history and the kind of uh, the backbone of this, this whole project. And Shomo can tell us a little bit about what this room tries to do. And maybe you can hear yeah. this yeah. one. So, uh, thank you, Sanjuti. Thank you uh, for like, uh, this lovely and detailed introduction. So, this room, like the gallery three of the exhibition, so when you enter the show, so you will find this room in the first, in the beginning. So, it's also the beginning of my project because before I start shooting of the people and the space and the work, I did at least like one and a half year research, just going through the materials which is still available. And the work is also about which is available now, like after 40 years of the massacre happened. So uh, if you see like uh, there are many things which I have written, like what I have found, not everything but like a more part of it, more like a miniature version of the, all the archives I have. So uh, can I move a bit? Yeah. So you can find like uh, there's uh, some leaflet which, which was like I found from Madhya Pradesh in 70, like which was actually distributed before they're coming to Morinchapi. So uh, this leaflet was issued on 22nd January 78 and they start moving to Morinchapi after that, like in the middle of uh, 78, more like March, April. And also you'll find the people I have made and many names like uh, whom I have interviewed, who are, whose interview is also part of the video. And many archive images uh, by Shubhrata uh, Bhatsuna, which photographer, and uh, then collection from Tushar Bhattacharya, like the pictures after the massacre happened. Uh, you can see the houses, like the broken houses. Um, and then there is an archive 
like the faces from the archive, like the archives I collected, who are still missing. So in our documents, I have found there are more than like 14,380 families actually uh, came to Morichabi and 10,260 families actually returned. So there's a 4,120 families never returned to uh, Dondukarunu camp. So they are still missing and like after 40 is very difficult to track like where are the 4,000 people but there are many names you can see here and the faces like who are still official, not officially but uh, when I meet their relatives and all they are still missing. There is no document of them like where are they now. And also uh, there is some newspaper cutting one of the archivists like who died last year. Most of the regional people who tried to work on it and keep it alive for the future generation so that they get they can get to know about the incident. So yes, this room is more like to get an idea about the massacre who never heard, like people from our generation who born after 80s or 90s who have no idea like when this massacre happened and what exactly happened. So for them actually this room is um, kind of an idea they can get from the video and information where the people are talking about their experiences and yes so in this also looks like like a mind map of sorts like as if like yes. it's also your thought process the way you're kind of organizing the material because work, yeah. history is like uh, sort of immense i was wondering if you wanted to shortly speak about the making of this video as well and before we move on to the other more like the other Core of the body of the yeah. work, what the work is. So uh, this video actually like uh, is like the three four years we travel, we meet the people, and we interviewed them. So I have not used that. I have directed this um, uh, video because there's no part like I can direct them because I didn't knew like what happened. So these people spontaneously talked about what happened for hours and hours and hours. And then finally we put together all the interviews together and made this interview. And this interview is also important because this helped me to make the images. Because as we know, like after 40 Morichapi, Morichapi does not exist itself because the island name also changed in Google Maps. So it's a different, you, you never know where is the island, where was the island. And uh, it's, it's now a tiger is a forest. So even if you enter, like you have to enter illegally. And uh, you don't have a legal permission. So this is a kind of a work where, you know, visual perspective, you have nothing to visualize because everything is already banished. So this video also, this conversation actually also helped me to uh, think about what exactly happened. And then I went back to Shundarabhan repeated few times and start making images. So this work is also important for me in a way like uh, I discussed about it many times. There are like two protagonists, one the survivors and another the space itself, like Shundarbhan itself. So yeah, now I think if you put it to the next one. So while the rooms of the exhibition sort of give, uh, show portraits of survivors, yes. some fantasy elements like uh, memories of survivors, maybe in the wall that we just saw with a kind of panel of eight uh, photographs, one is a portrait of a survivor, the others are reconstruction of events from their and other people's memory. So it's kind of a mix of like it's a fiction, fantasy, fact and fiction mix. Uh, and uh, there, sorry, there was some uh, disturbance in the middle. So there are like the memories of people of houses burning, etc. For example, this is a photograph of that, that space. And to talk about space, like Chomo personally feels a lot of the, this work, this particular body of work is a lot about space. And it's like a spatial exploration of this 
sort of island, like he just said, Morichapi, that doesn't exist anymore, that is so hard to enter, etc. So it's we are. Uh, also difficult to find where it is. Difficult like, to find, yeah. Going so in circle, but we can show you, like, this was the space. It's very difficult to know, like, where because the Shundaka Islands looks very similar because the forest and the water. And you know, it's, it's a very interesting space because it changes with time. Like, during the high tide, the water level rises up. So, like, the forest which is also goes down under the water and then after a few hours, like the, during the low tide, the forest also comes up. So like it, it's, it's kind of a very interesting place for me itself, like it changes with time, like in every day. And uh, so this room, if you see, it's basically three uh, space, picture of the space, one is a dense forest from tree, like inside the tree, you can see a black hole. And the tide is somehow like, is vanishing inside this black hole and this is how like the starting point for me the project and in the opposite there's a, another picture of an island which is somehow you now it is like it's going under the water in, in coming years because we all know that because of the global warming the water rising up the sun is also in the right picture is also you can see the trees are already during the high tide time that is under the water. So this this room actually gives the idea about the space itself and the character. That's why like we plan to install this three image uh, in this room. Yeah. No, I, I also wanted to ask a little bit about sort of I know there's a lot of sugar about this area is a very uh, intensely ecologically fragile area and there is a lot of awareness and work especially in the last years that's happening mm -hmm. many uh, but what is your personal engagement with the space that brought you drew you to this kind of space and this particular uh, period in history and like what are, what are the connections you're making like obviously this work uh, kind of resonates very deeply with our times right, contemporary times right now, both in terms of ecological crisis and in terms of uh, sort of political eviction and like this with the Citizenship Amendment Act, etc. So how do those, those two contemporary things tie into your, this particular event in history and the changing course of water yeah. and etc. like rising even back then, even in the 70s. I think this, this particular work, like the reason behind it to start with not on Shundagon, definitely like I, I, I know the place very well for a long time, but uh, the work is mainly like starting is with the partition history, like the 47 partition. And this partition also actually started many problems which we are still struggling with. Uh, so the work is connected with those materials, the starting point of all the incidents we are actually facing now. The law, the, uh, the citizenship law is a very important thing when these people like, including my family and many others family, I think like who came from Bangladesh, uh, this law was like a complicated in 47 itself. So uh, it was like, it was not clear like who can get the citizenship and who will not. And it was, it was said like you can come and get a citizenship, but it was not like that, that we will understand now. And the importance of the papers was also not mentioned in 47. What people are asked, like the politicians or the government, running government are asking after almost 60, 70 years. So this work is somehow like, is also important, like the place they actually used to leave, the place actually they moved. And this massacre happened. So this things is important, like what they already come through during these 40, 60 years. And is it possible for them still now to carry all those documents? Because the like they first went to Dondokarno, then they went to Morichabi, then again they went to Dondokarno, then moved because the Dondokarno itself was not an area for living because it's a mountain area, dry land. And these people from where they are coming here, mainly uh, profession was farming or fishing. So we also have to understand like how they used to earn money. And when they are going to the area which is mountain, so it's not suitable for farming, it's not suitable for fishing. And these people are coming from Joshua, Bolshna, you know, like the Bangladesh and uh, West Bengal is the like state of river, spaces. exactly. Yeah. So, and those places is really dry land, the Andhra Pradesh, UP and 
Mantra uh, Pradesh border is basically the Bindu Parvat uh, area, mm -hmm. it's basically a dry mountain land, mm -hmm. stony area. Mm -hmm. So it was not a good decision actually to move these people to a different uh, location where they can't uh, find appropriate job for them. And also, um, you know, like when they moved there, they also not familiar with the language. So it was like a problem for the very beginning. And when I started working with the body shop, and the point of doing this work is that it's a starting point where people can rethink about the history to understand what is happening now and this is not like this is like last 60 years how government is oppressing our voice the lower caste voice the marginalized voice uh, and they are not following the basic human rights actually people need to use and also uh, the another point is the present government central government they are somehow using this massacre itself as a problem between religion which was not actually true so that is also a point like doing this work making the book and now making the website to clarify like it is not a religion problem that uh, what actually they want to impose against that time government and also impose to the people it majorly a problem of the power it's a power dynamic. so uh, yeah, so Just to quickly, uh, because I uh, mentioned only for people who might not know, I mentioned very quickly in a line that this body of work is about the 1979 Morinchapi yeah. massacre, which is uh, uh, which was a forced eviction of Bengali Dalit refugees from Bangladesh uh, by the uh, by the CPM government in power, um, and the and hundreds of people were evicted and. Uh, Hundred thousand people. Hundred thousand people were evicted, and like a lot of starvation, de death, and disease followed. And in the context of that, this one, in case anyone missed, just right at the beginning, in the context of that conversation, this work, uh, in the context of that history, this work has been made. And while we saw in the initial room that the kind of rigorous uh, interaction, like engagement with the history of this event, uh, this work is somehow. A little bit more than that, as it has to be, because uh, because of all the missing uh, elements that Shomo mentions, including the island itself, and uh, in the so now we will see a little bit more about how Shomo imagines this space, how Shomo uh, sort of tries to uh, capture memory, etc. Because this is not a work that shows you sort of yes it sometimes shows you we will go on move on to some images where he documents uh survivors yeah. wounds that continue to exist in this day uh but it is also uh, in other uh, he engages with this particular history in other ways not just in, with the direct documentation of like that violent event wanton violence but like also uh through what happens after the violence, what happens decades after the violence, how do they remember it and how do they forget some things. So, so uh, yeah. I also I like to talk about this okay. for a minute. So I found this image uh, from the Morishapi island itself a couple of years back and then I start looking for this is an image of the people like who are the teachers of Morichapi school. It's a school made by the refugee uh, Bangladeshi like lower caste refugees so I started looking for him and then finally found him in 2019 in a remote island in Madhya Pradesh uh, Malkangiri district uh, he also passed away last year uh, but it's interesting like it's also kind of for me a journey like for, uh, of trying to find a person from a picture and then finally I got to meet him and then he also like his interview is also in, in, in the video uh, like about the incident and the school and about the massacre itself. So let's move to yeah. this room. So um, this four images I like to start with. So this okay. four images also uh, give you the idea of, of the island. So the first image is itself of the Morishapi island. Uh, where the massacre happened, where these people used to live. So I took this picture from the opposite of the Morichapi island. And and then uh, there's three other landscape from the Shundurpat island. And one picture here is uh, the picture of 
a body floating in the river, which is actually the people told me many times that they have from the opposite islands and the villagers told me that uh, they have seen that the floating bodies for weeks and months. So uh, if you see the work like um, it's a work of reality and uh, something like I imagine and I, I say that because when you are working on this kind of issue there are many missing link inside the incident because after 40 years you don't have all the materials actually you are looking for. So there are some things you also have to think about what may be happened and what may be not. And when you see the work you also get this confusion that this image is real which is not real. And this is also was there in my head when I was doing this work particularly because I was also not sure like the person who is telling me is actually the truth or the person actually heard about it or maybe the, I have no idea and it's very difficult to prove also that this person was there in the monitor in which position or in not sure so I just have to believe then and think about it so for me like I think it is also an interesting journey for me like to go through this thinking process of listening somewhat go back to the space where these things happen and try to think like where is the house, where is the space, where the fighting happened, who are the people, maybe this boat uh, I have found from Sundarbans area, maybe uh, this one was used for the fire. So like many things which is really like when I went in like one of the survivors and the later to Nirmal Mahu and the school headmaster we have seen in the previous room. So it's a letter to Nirmal in the Dhari on 79, 22nd January, seven days before the first police firing happened, which happened in 31st January, 79. So there are documents which is not photographs, but it's a visual document. So like archive also sometime, you know, after years, the importance of the letter, it was an important letter when it was sent 22nd January, but after the 40 years, it also become a visual document itself. So, yes, and then do you have any question? Or? No, I guess you should talk a little bit about uh, some of the images in that. So, from here, this means uh, there are four portraits and for this particular world. The first is basically a tiger attack one. You can see here like the skull, the back of the uh, skull. So it has happened when uh, they were hiding inside the forest and uh, the tiger attack you know, from the back. From the, like, hiding inside the forest during yeah, the massacre. During the massacre, yeah. And things happened and then like in the next image uh, we saw the conversation maybe with the survivor that they had it under the leaves and the trees for days, like until the police or and the local carrier political category during the island. So and then uh, this another image is basically you know the bone baby pala, uh, which is a folk form of Shundarbun to uh, goddess like bone baby and dokhin right. So this image is have made from uh, academic writing that she said like uh, the day maybe. Uh, bone Bibi actually lost the war uh, against Dokkin Rai. So you can see a human body and the tiger is there. So it's, it's, it's more like a theoretical image, but it's like many people think that the Shundarpun tiger became man in their software. It's, it's a myth, like, I have no idea if it's true or not, but many academics actually also mentioned about it that uh, like the people there, Shundarpun, also believe in it. Like they saw it like for the tiger, so a huge source of human body and human blood. So uh, this image, and then you can also see this another image uh, where uh, Shobhi Babu is showing the bullet wound he is still carrying in his right legs. And then do you think it's sort of uh, end with talking about this particular piece and uh, maybe uh, we can look at the letter for a bit and then sort of move out to the images and 
this is sort of uh, yeah this is the only work in the series which is actually the person photographed uh, person photographed isn't um, part of the Morichapi uh, is not one of the survivors it's actually one of Shomu's friends and I would like to end today's live by asking that how does this sort of fit into this whole narrative into his no, uh, his this particular storytelling that he's doing that uh, why did he uh, choose to uh, sort of uh, photograph a friend mm -hmm. and what were the limitations of and what is the connection of that with this letter so I think like when we are working on this kind of work or project it is always like you know you are in a position to think or take the decision what is the right and which is not like an ethical question and in my work I always think about it like continuously like from uh, how actually it's, 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 it's always a complicated thing to represent a community uh, in a kind of work like this so when I found this particular letter of Pradeep Sarvai Road from Malkan Giri area, uh, so I, I thought that I will not use anything which is actually the parent letter itself. So I translated the letter, I, I, I omitted, I deleted the names of our titles so because it's already happened 40 years back and I don't want to like, I don't want to let her go through the same thing which actually she already want to forget. Like she doesn't want to remember about it. So why should I put her in a position where she will think about it? So I have not asked her anything to her. I just took the letter and I translated it and then I discussed with one of my friends that how we can represent this in an image which is not violent because it's not always necessary to show something violent in which is itself violent because when you are talking about this, we are thinking about this, we already have a huge visual archive in our head what is happening in Kashmir, what is happening in many other places in India, like the Hindi diaries and like in the last 30, 40 years, already available online. So so then we start thinking about an image what we can do. So we made these four images uh, with a bird mask. And the project name is itself, but the birds never seen. And uh, so we thought about it, and we made these images, which actually also put together with the letter itself. Like when you read the letter, you think about them, and think about Shatap. You never think about the person actually who went to the incident, but you will also think about what exactly happened. So that is, I think, for me, is important to put the massacre on the surface so that people rethink about it. They start speaking about it and there are many like archives, details which are also we are trying to put together under one website like morichapi.com so there people can uh, see all the evolution things that happen. Uh, so yes that was the idea behind uh, this particular picture. Okay thank you Shomo, thanks everyone whoever joined us on the live and uh, uh, Shomo is uh, already working on some other projects, new projects which are also kind of sort of work with like uh, other uh, yeah. moments of political history and tying in with his own personal histories and family history etc. And uh, we should be, uh, we are going to look forward to that. Meanwhile we will also have the other live session soon and I, we hope to see you there.